All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are rip roaring and ready to go. Game number three, hyper. It's uh, tied up one one, guys. ESV Wildfire bringing it back to match point. Magikarp looking strong. Game number one kind of didn't really know what they were doing. Game number two, and well, here we are going to Sky Temple, Mr. Huss. And the key to unlocking Magikarp was banning Hammer, picking mm -hmm. Uther Valor. And, and what have ESV is that done? something we're going to see <laughs> And they've taken Diablo away as well. This could be disastrous for Magic Up. They've banned... Oh, they took Stitches as well. All right, well, let, let's try this from the beginning. That's okay, not... so it was ban ETC for mm -hmm. Magic Ups, ban yep. Hammer for Wildfire. Yep. First pick the Rhaegar for Magic Up. Understandable. Solid first pick, but you currently have him solo heal. ESV Wildfire, go with that Valor Uther again. Magikarps then return it with two damage dealers in the Zebo and Tychus. And then ESV Wildfire just goes so ham and takes yeah. Stitches and Diablo with ETC band. Oh boy. Like, who do Magikarp go now? They... Mirrodin. It's either Mirrodin or something real funky. Hmm. Oh, to me, it's got to be a Mirrodin. Yeah, uh, yeah, it has to be Mirrodin. It has to be. Barrel Boys, come on, bring us a Chen. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't actually expect Magic Carp to go EU on us, but there it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Chen still as a solo tank isn't the best. And Rhaegar as a solo heal is not the best. And exactly. Magic Carp is very much out of their element without their Diablo. Uh, there's no Zagara Wombo here. They don't have a Sergeant Hammer. This will this will be new territory for us. We'll have to see if they actually do have something up, uh, something else up their sleeve. What do they think for a last pick here? I would totally go for Malfurion, to be honest. Malfurion would work, yeah. But I can't, I can't really see the Trank being too useful. It's more of a deny pick. Yeah. At least in my well, eyes. ESV have Uther, so they don't really need a second spot. I honestly quite like Tyrael here. Or Illidan. No. Il <laughs> Illidan. No. No. I'm I'm vetoing that. <laughs> Sorry. It's open. You've got Rhaegar. It makes some kind of sense. Tyrande against the double tank helps with the Well they got ten seconds to figure yeah. it out. They're, they're, as I said, I think they're really far out of their element here. They don't, they, they're yeah, going to go. They're going home. Tried and true. X Storm, perhaps a little bit limited on his repertoire. 100% with the Zagara. Now, all of them except the Rhaegar do have mounts, and it is Sky Temple. It's a big map. Chen, in terms of like a solo Merker, solo uh, capping on the uh, temples, not terrible whatsoever. But man, do I really like ESV's team rather than Magic Arp here. Yeah, you look at ESV, it makes sense. I think that's the key point here. You look at it and it's like, yeah, that, that's a fair team. They, they drafted well. You look at Magic Up and you just think, what happened? Kind of got a little bit out of control. Yeah. <laughs> it started off well, like ban ETC. We've been doing it every game. Let's do that. We've got Rhaegar open first pick. Yeah, let's go for that. Nazebo's open. So much damage. And then it kind of took a dive. <laughs> Once they gave up the double tank of Stitches Diablo, because that was something that was key. Every game with uh, against Wildfire, they early picked their Diablo. This time, they left it till final rotation? Yep. Yeah, final rotation. And you just can't give teams that much freedom to take it away from you when you've played it in every game you've played today. You just can't. Well, that's going to be your drafts, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, place your bets. We kind of are both sort of favoring ESV as a stronger lineup. It is Sky Temple once more, so bigger map. Uh, we're looking for those tempos. We're looking for those bosses. And uh, we, we were talking a little bit. You're not much of a fan of Sky Temple. No, I'm not. I feel like the main problem with Sky Temple right now is that second temple. One team will hit 10 during that temple, and they tend to just snowball from there. It's, uh, it's one of the problems with it. Also, the fact that nine times out of ten, one team will try their absolute hardest to throw the game. Like I was saying in the break, one team will, one player will just go, 
Yeah, seven minute boss sounds like a brilliant idea right now. Two of them are dead, let's go. But the Sky Temple boss seems that bit stronger than normal Grave Golems. So it's never a good idea unless you're like 5v3 or something. Like full HP, something that's dead cert for you to gain. Yeah, I feel like in that situation you just go for the easy camp of the enemy rather than trying to risk the boss. It's more or less the same early on. Well, we're going to find out, guys, who is going to take home the win and face off against Evil Geniuses, who have been waiting very patiently in the final round. Uh, you know, I told them, you guys, you guys got a little bit of time. They came back, they checked in. They are still anxious to get these finals going because, you know, for all the guts and glory and the seeding points into the finals, it's uh, going to come down to this last fight. Will it be Team Blue once more? Onto the void. It will be Pickles, Iacona, Wargramon, Tsunami, and Bims making up ESV Wildfire. And this is their yeah. game to lose. It is. And it looks like they're taking a five man stack, whereas the red side of Magic Card, they're going Kotank and Honey Dip Top, Tian and Chen in mid, and Zagara solo pushing bot. Makes a ton of sense. Very kind of static roles. Like we don't really see. As I said, some of these bigger repertoires that maybe we're used to seeing, it's been 100% Lark Daddy, you know, yeah. on those uh, on those tanks. X Storm has not done anything except the Zagara. <laughs> Kotank hasn't done anything except the Tychus. Honey Dip has shown us Uther, but of course they uh, did lose out on that draft today. And you know, well, once again, we've, we've been very vocal about solo heal Rhaegars not really having a lot of place in uh, the higher competitive stuff. Look at this gank setup down here. Yeah. Oh, they got it! Oh, they got it! And that is a dead brute mother. She is out of here. But yeah, I feel like with Rhaegar solo, you at least need one more healing ward to at least compensate. Cassidars, Tyrandas, Asmodan, believe it <laughs> Yeah. Or just, you know, a second support. Yeah. Well, then, <laughs> then you're not solo healing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Trank Mao. Uh, oh. Silence mouth. Who knows? Well, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that for a long time. Shrines are up. Not too much early aggression except for that Zagara pick. These are actually a relatively early initial shrine. Well, in terms of uh, the temples coming back and forth, there's uh, two schools of thought. Either you can test the mid or you just go straight for the top. The mid, when left uncontested, will actually yield you more experience. Believe it or not, Mr. Haas, yes, because it takes because down it an extra to the tower. tower before the yeah. Mountain. yeah. Whereas I don't know why I bothered trying to test your knowledge. Yeah, the tower is positioned <laughs> the other side to top, so it goes Fountain Fort Tower. Yep. Trying to catch me out. It may be 3 a.m., but I'm still on it. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> good on you, uh, Now, they're going for the contesting top. They have just soaking mid, and this is very nice from ESV there. Take it down, Chen. He will fall. Now, Honey Dip is next on the list. Stitches, slam, 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 <laughs> slam, just all turn Doesn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems Stitches like two bars for slam. Magic half is just throwing men at this top shrine, and now Pickles, after exhausting mid, is just going to join and say, yeah, good luck with this. We're, this is ours. Get out of here. And because of that mid XP, and because of them soaking bot lane and getting so much, they're six before the enemy is even five. And so early on, this is a great lead for ESV. Yeah, As I said, it's their game to throw. Now Chen dies for two, the second time. Yeah, pandas are in danger, but now that's two less of them in the world. I mean, he literally got caught, and then he spawned, came back, and got caught. I'm yeah. not entirely too sure if Troll two, two used to be playing wasn't level, paying attention. Yeah. Two used to be playing level 20 Diablo. Exactly right, yeah. Boss is actually now <laughs> going to be spawned, and he's going to be on the field. Next temple will be all the way south, and there will only be one of them. But the level lead is fairly significant. You know, seven and up against the five. We do got these early game talents, and we're going to be looking for these easy boss, uh, sorry, these easy siege camps now as well to be pushing down and putting up some pressure. Top lane, however, for Magic Carp, they're actually going to go for their bruisers. So if they don't go for a contest on the temple, they can push with bruisers and try to equalize the fort kills. So something you see more often than not actually, is the teams will take this bruiser camp early, but they won't camp it. 
until uh, the announcer says the temples are spawning in XYZ seconds. They'll wait until that comes up and then cap it. So there's still pressure top because by the time this temple spawns, this hard camp in top lane is going to not be there. There's going to be no pressure. But they decided to take it straight away. And I guess against Uther, it's not too bad. His wave clear isn't the best. And with Tychus up there, he's going to be shredding towers pretty quickly. Yeah, but with no Uther down south, that's really just kind of yeah. relying on Tassadar. And I think that they really did want to try to grab the Bruisers and Easy before the Tempo did spawn out. But as you can see, they kind of got beat to the punch. Both sets of the Stone Browser uh, have to be cleaned up into the spawn lane before that Tempo does spawn out. You did mention the top is going to get cleared, and it basically is now dead in the water. And Iacona immediately is just going to start rotating down. Uh, Tychus to slightly beat him to the punch, but the positioning is solid for me as Wildfire. It is, and they're already in this temple. Pickles capturing that and Stitches and his comrades just there on the outside. And this is what I was saying, if they, well, Lark Daddy's gonna get caught again here. He should survive. Yep, he's but... gonna be alright. Pickles comes in from, from the side, the Shadow Charge, Lark Daddy just jumps to the other side of him. And uh, it should actually just be like a reset with the healing word. But either way, the temple's still going here to the blue. Ha! Like Daddy just gets face planted right look, into the wall. Look at it this way. The SB are about to hit 10 on this second shrine. And they have the potential to just power straight on through. Pickles, though, he's caught in a bit of a bad spot. There's the level 10. <laughs> Pickles are just hiding there. The, like, uh, get the out of here. comes over. Out <laughs> That's the here, here comes back. lightning. Yeah, the rain of vengeance is strong. The Zebo is going to drop. There goes the Diablo. Uh, but uh, the Chen has now dropped as well. The vile, the green carpet coming out from Stitches is enough for the four man wipe. And all they got for return for Magic Carp is that Diablo. They also have now lost uh, virtually this bottom port. I can't imagine they're going to let it live. War Greymon, Bims, and Tsunami for sure are going to be pushing in. That's going to put us close to 12 now as well. Very strong early game from ESV. I'm very glad that whoever is the shot caller for ESV didn't say let's go boss. <laughs> but their bruiser camp is still up in top. We see Magic Carp's now hitting 10. They're going to be pretty standard. They run the Maw, they run Odin. It has to be Ravenous Spirit. And then are they up to up to the present with Wandering Keg? No, they are not. We're getting Panda Pals. Up against the stand, uh, a slam stitches, the s fist of justice, the divine storm, a reign of vengeance. That is a risky pick. It is. It's a big, big risk. It's like why we do, why we see more stage dives than mosh pits. I feel yeah. it's just sometimes the reset is like if we go for the panda pals, any stun hits Loctite during that one second cast. It's on cooldown for ten seconds. That's enough to die. Yeah. Personal experience will affirm this <laughs> for multiple players. They were trying to get the pick on the Zagara down here, but instead they're just going to force her away, take the easy camp, and they're going to have four easy camps pushing down bot. And that's going to do a lot of damage. They can just sit on this bridge. They have the aisle, four hook Zagara. Yep, that's yep. a Divine Storm in for the follow up. It's going to be a tower on top of it, and that should be 13. Hype. And they're going to boss. Okay, this is a safe boss. I like this. Rhaegar Tychus top. They saw Chuck mid. They saw the Zebo going up towards top as well. And combine this boss with the four Siege Giants that are already in the bot lane. This is going to do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Absolutely. So, Temples are up. They find, the Magikarp will finally actually get that top pressure that they were looking for. And that will be the fort. Put them about, what, 12 and a quarter? Yeah. yeah. A little less, but they are giving up quite a bit of map positioning on this because they're so far top. They might actually go for one of these temples, but I mean, at the same time, ESV, they're not bothering whatsoever. They're nurturing the boss. They're nurturing double siege golem yep. camp. And this is going to be a keep before we even hit a temple hut. So four golems, or four siege giants, yep. plus the healing ward keeping them sustained. Ayakone using his uh, wow. view on them as well. That's a very nice call, but where's the follow-up? Well, the Banelings are there, but it's going to be, you know, just Co-Tank not really adding too much to it. Lightning Breath coming up from Pickles does take home the kill on top of the Rhaegar. Lots of low hit points across the field, but Lark Daddy, he's actually out of the Panda Pals now, and fortunately, he's out of tricks. 
The panda once again going in danger. The keep is down. The turret is actually going to be next. Still got four stone bros and the boss marching down. And it's not going to be permanent core damage, I don't think. Nope. But ESV didn't lose a single team member that fight. But two temples are up. They're going to just yes. split and take two complete temples. So what's this going to be? It's going to go top tower. Mid fort. Oh, no, it's going to go mid. Everything on and mid then first. Top fort. Mid fort, yeah. then top fort. So they're getting two forts here. They should have 16 from it. Or maybe uh, we not. Got, have to fall yeah. down. Well, on one of them. We do got the aggression yeah. here coming into the mid. Uh, with a four-man pressure from Magic Card. Bottom still is taken away, and uh, I'm not entirely too sure that'll be the top for it. Well, we, I think we actually have enough shots left for it, so depends on where those last five do end up. Still fight going down once more. Honey Dip is a big target, gets into the Shadow Charge, Overpower, and Death combination, and that signals the retreat here for Magic Card. For sure that top fort is gonna drop in mid-keep, uh, mid-gate, sorry. It's gonna be the next target. 16 to 13 for the levels. Yep. They're gonna get one mid tower. Where's this other five shots gonna go? Okay, that's gonna go onto the other tower inside. That won't fall. It kind of scatters. Yeah. <laughs> Three level lead though. They've got these 16 talents. Blood for blood. Still this slam build. The imposing presence from Big yeah. is big. Zagara, uh, Tychus. Even Chen to a degree. He has, yeah. he has to get in. There it is. Doing some damage onto Bims, but even so, it's not really too great. They're just going to go back, steal these easy camps away like they've been doing all game. The pressure on bot lane will be so big that they can just see the mid on top. Uh, are we seeing, we seeing an invade? We, we had the perfect clairvoyance. Did actually find that the hard camp is being done. Tsunami's looking for the position. He's going to look for a hook. He's going to get the panda who does not go through the building, unfortunately. But a great maw, Honey Dip, is going to stay alive with the skin of his teeth, the four man maw. But there's no follow up once more. The panda pals are here somewhere. I could have sworn I saw them. But, you know, Stitches is actually going to be the one to drop Honey Dip a little bit too far forward. He's going to also be the exchange. Stitches and Uther dead in the water. Pickles on the retreat. Everybody's splitting up. Lark Daddy's trying to chase down War Greymon with the help of TN. But I'm not entirely too sure they can beat out Bims, which will leave us with Pickles to be the kill. But he shadow charges for it. I think X Storm has his number. And that will actually be a fight that goes the way of Magikarp. Finally putting some points on the board. It does, and I don't think the shield of the core will fall. There are two catapults and two stone bros, as you call them. But the shield remains intact. Let's see if they can get anything onto Kotank, and the answer's no. While Greenwood and Bims both out of mana. So not too great for them. And again, this 13 talent from Rhaegar. It's the healing surge, the solo healer. Yep, that's been three for three with him. Uh, well, sorry, two. Yeah, three for yes, three, three games that he's been in, but uh, we did have one of that Uther. Next tempo is going to be up, and we still got a death timer here for Zagara. Just going to be down for another five seconds or so. So in terms of getting to this fight, we should actually be able to put up some pressure because we've now caught up with the talents for Magic Carp. If they can take another fight, they can equalize out the levels, but we also have you know, still some death, to, uh, some heroic timers taken away. We have the Archon, which is the big one here. Lark Daddy, though, getting caught. Pickles already very low in this fight. Pickles about down to half. Here comes the Lark Daddy. He's thinking of the Panda Bells. No, nope, he's not going to do it. Zagara does die just after that mod going off. That's going to be Pickles looking for the kill on top of Kotank. Will almost grab it. We don't have the pandas. There we go. Now they're finally going to come out, but could this be too little, too late? They are getting absolutely murdered. Bims in the back with that Archon looking so strong. So many kills going back and forth. Lark Daddy does jump forward with a combination attack. Gets the kill on top of War Greymon, and the AP juggling was insane. Magikarp looking for the ace of the match. They're coming back strong here at this late game. Bims looking for the juke. It's not going to find it, and he cannot take home Lark Daddy. And after he shares the wealth on that drink. My goodness, what a fight. And at the end of it all, it's Magikarp coming out ahead. Yeah, I feel like Bims is focused towards the end. He popped the Archon, got into the back line. He spent way too much time trying to focus down the Tychus when he should have been peeling. Imagine if he was at the at the front line there, where he was on the Chen, he was on the Zebo, he was on the Rhaegar. Man, he would have maybe turned this fight. Are they going to go for the boss? Okay. They are. They are. Yeah. Uther is up. Diablo in five. They should have it in time. 
So I I, I want to pick your brain while you're here, yeah, since we're, we're watching this. What kind of panda builds do we see a lot in EU? Because this is a four trait yeah. tier build from Lark Daddy. I, I was about to question because I haven't actually seen too much Chen myself. I've just uh, heard that EU's been going for it. I haven't been too focused on the build, but his talents got moved around a bit, didn't they? Uh, it did, yeah. His snare on leap is now at 16? It is. Yeah. That's the big question for me here. Like, the real big one, because there's no CC on this uh, on this magic harp side. So I'm really questioning why he didn't go for that. I guess it kind of worked in that last fight. I mean, he was there just brewing up, getting so much. And he's been giving the shield to his team, which again worked him there because there's the AoE damage of Vala, there's the AoE of Stitches, Diablo, everything coming in. So the shield working out there. The uh, shield on himself obviously worked. It's been working for him, but the, it's the snare which is the real big question for me. I don't know why he hasn't gone for it. So he does have uh, enough to share, which is kind of like yeah. a four-leaf clover sort of pattern. When he drinks, he shields allies. And that those shields have actually been doing a lot of yep. work helping out with the Rhaegar heals. I mean, the Rhaegar solo heal, we, we, we kind of poo-poo on it quite a bit. <laughs> but um, at the same time, those shields coming out have been really phenomenal. I'm a little curious why we did take Chug at 16, because yeah. this is where you would see pressure point. This is where you would see combination attack, which is uh, the extra damage bonus. It was nerfed. And the pressure point's no longer a one second root, it is a 90% slow, just like you see yeah. with an Earth Grass totem, uh, which we do have on the table. So, this... Chug, I, I don't know, Chug doesn't really feel like it fits in this kit. Yeah, I, I agree. And this is actually the first time we've seen Earth Grass token instead of the Blood for Blood. They're trying to engage in this top lane because this shrine is up very soon. Yeah, Lark Daddy once again just in the back line. He's take, soaking up quite a bit of that damage, but that's going to be the Maw. That's going to be the Ravenous coming out as well. The Thor looking for the big damage number. Tsunami's going to use out that file to try to get away as Pickles and Shadow Charge to the front. Kotank is going to get hooked, and that was a phenomenal uh, hook and Rain of Vengeance combo. This could actually be the ESV fight because Lark Daddy's down to one of his pandas, and TN, he's actually now going to be sprinting away to victory or. Well, at least survival. Honey Dip was the kind of just in the back. He survived. He was the big uh, heals, and he did do his job. But unfortunately, no kills after all those wombos for the ESV. And now we got temples up, and we're down two members for the Magic Garden. Yeah, they're already taken top. They're going to get pushed away because it is just Ayakuna up there. He doesn't have sprint up. He's still got 20 seconds on that. He is going to survive, though. They got, what, half of top lane, just shy of half. They should, in theory, get all of bot lane. Bot lane for them is the important one here because that's hammering on the mid key and it should take it. Whereas top, it would go for the gate first and it probably wouldn't get the key. Honey Dip was within an inch of his life, got off a really well-timed uh, ancestral healing. He's going to be alive for it all. Oh, Pickles is lightning breathing creeps down there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ayakona was a big target for Magikarp aggression, but unfortunately they were not able to get the Uther. He really does walk away a lot of the time. And that's going to be 20 hype as some of these keeps are starting to fall. In fact, it's 12. Is oh, it? There, there it is. is. That's going to be naked core. And the core will survive the onslaughts of the temples, but at the same time, it is ready to go, ready to get rushed down. 20 for both sides, though. What do we see, Huss? Uh, we've got the Hard Shield coming in for Stitches, making him that bit tankier. Archon Blink on Tassada and Valor, respectively. Uther, it's not going to be anything other than Divine Hurricane. Storm Shield coming in. Upgraded Panda Pals, because of course there's no longer Resurgence. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, level 20, we haven't seen it too much. Chen does get Hard and Shield, though, I, I believe. So, interesting why we haven't seen that one. Annihilated Spirit as standard, Blink on Zagara's span, standard reload. Sometimes we see the more upgrade, and they recently changed it in the patch so that even when it's on cooldown, even when you don't kill someone that isn't with inside the more, you still get the CDR from it. You get that uh, flat cooldown reduction of seconds, which can be very strong because I believe if you get four kills, it's off cooldown again. And against a Diablo, that could be pretty strong. Like, effectively, you've got to kill six people in a fight. Uh, it's it's a little too hard to give up a yeah. though, I think. It's it's just yeah. so good, especially with all the catches that we have here for ESV Wildfire. A, a blink could get you free and clear in, in pretty good order. Yeah, but all ESV now really needs to do is wait. 
Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what they're doing. They're just pushing lanes, they're avoiding fights. Both teams are level 20, despite the fact that all keeps and, and forts are missing for Magikarp. They are neck and neck in the levels. I mean, they have, what, three keeps difference between them. Yeah, so what do Magikarp do now? Do they go for top shrine, get 100% of that? Or do they try and contest this mid? Because they, essentially, they need to contest. Yeah, they need to contest. Otherwise, their core will be about twenty percent. Mark Daddy on the wrong side of things. He's gonna get bursted down, and that is gonna be a bad oh. kill. Not what he needed. Here comes the Ravenous. Ayakona looking a little low, but Pickles with that uh, lightning breath. The Maw with entirely, and uh, ESV low hit points across the board. But they did get the kill on Chen, and we did have. Core damage going down back and forth. Still, the Odin is in full effect. He cannot really contest that. And Pickles is about to find that out. It's okay. He'll be back in five seconds. This is not over quite yet, but it's also going to be 21 hype for both teams. Look at Iacona. He's yes. going to go straight up here. He's looking to put some core damage up. Yep. And it will only be a few bullets. That's about, what, six gone? And the core still has a shield, but we have three catapults to the south. Two in the mid and three to the north. Yeah. As now TN is going to fall. They trade one for one there. Even so, this favors ESV so much. Just look at the blue on the map towards the core. It doesn't matter if they get the shrine or not. Well, the Vine Storm, however, is going to just do the, its best. We got the bile there. Another lightning bread, and it is massive. Honey Dip is not going to live. And it doesn't actually matter. As you said, there's so much blue on the course, and that is going to be the win. The fight did not matter, and it will be once more ESV Wildfire proving their veterancy in the scene, and they will take down Magikarp to advance against evil geniuses for the finals. Kings of the Storm weekly number 12. Yeah, and that third map is actually the closest in the series. Both teams ended, but well, in fact, it was Magikarp who ended ahead on XP. They ended 300 XP ahead there, but they lost the team fights. They lost the shrines. They lost their structures way too early on and lost their core at the end. So unfortunately, they dropped down to the third place match where they face uh, ESV Tempest. But as for Wildfire, as you said, <laughs> they head on to play the evil geniuses of Idra and Co. So we're looking at a top four placement for both ESV yep. teams. And uh, yeah, Evil Genius have been waiting around a little bit. I know they're going to be chomping at the the bit to get this going. So uh, when we return, guys, the first game of our best of three finals for Kings of the Storm Weekly number 12, Orko Jester and Hasselot. Maybe we'll see some more Chens, but uh, something tells me we're not. And uh, maybe we'll see some more Illidans because I know that you've definitely been uh, <laughs> for that. What will we see? Don't know. That's why you guys are going to have to stick around to find out because when we return, game one hype and the continuation of this game series, see you in a few.